just checked all the fluids in the tractor get ready to lay down some hay i've got se several fields i want to do i'm gonna <clears throat> i'd really like to cut tomorrow i'm gonna cut some tomorrow but i want to go ahead and lay them some down today the soil is definitely saturated so uh, i think what i'm going to lay down today <clears throat> is going to get a little bit of extra ground drying time this is monday memorial day uh, we're clear till friday so as long as the drying conditions aren't terrible which it's sunny about 80 lower 80s 80 82 and the wind's blowing so humidity's probably up just a little bit but uh, i think with the wind blowing and everything we're going to be pretty good really so i'm going to cut some today this evening and then tomorrow i'm going to cut i think the neighbor's field and then part of the back field so we'll end up with about five, probably 14 to 15 acres cut uh, and the back field i'm actually going to cut a little bit so probably a little bit a little bit more than that but i'm going to cut all the lower spots in the back field um and i'm gonna probably wait till tuesday give it a chance to dry i'm gonna cut all that stuff that's all junk stuff it's going to get round baled so that's not really i don't even really consider that a load on what i can handle because i'm just going to round bale it and then i'm done with it i don't have to pick it up and stack it in the barn and get it out of the dry out of the weather so that's my plan here's to no rain coming hopefully all right guys so we're in the middle of cutting check some stuff out here i got the kids with me so i haven't been really videoing there's two in there running the center pivot is a uh, handful. This some of the thinner stuff up here. We get off the ridge, you can see this is laying down from our wind and rain that we had last night, but it's uh, easily shoulder high. I, yeah, there's some bugs up there, isn't there? A lot of bugs. I don't know why that would be to you. Think there's bugs living in this hay? Yeah. yeah there's bugs in every field. Out. Definitely some wet spots, but uh, didn't rain on me. There's a little bit of a cell coming right at me, and it looked like it kind of split. One went north, one went south, so worked out pretty good. Now, as long as we can get it dry before the next rain comes, which I think we have until Friday. This is Monday, so we should be good, but I've said that before, so we'll see, I guess. Good afternoon, everybody looking at the garden here right quick looks like everything is up not not every seed is up but we got our peas cucumbers corn watermelon and cantaloupe plants and of course we got our tomato plants which they didn't come up they were planted as a plant obviously so we're getting ready to cut some more hay we cut the east field yesterday and we cut uh, the back field 
the portion north of the ditch, that little area there, and then the part where you first go through the field, we cut that. Now, I'm going to go over to the neighbor, and she wants me to actually cut her pasture area, which is not very big. It's a little rough, though, so uh, she wants it cut and bailed off just to clean it up, rather than, I've been bush hogging it, so it's not like it doesn't ever get cut. Uh, so, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the hay field over there. And once I'm done cutting that hay field, then I'll go into her pasture and cut it. When you cut hay, your tires should not be this muddy. So, we'll have the neighbor's field, which is another five acres in her pasture, which I'm not even really going to include that in the hay. I'm just doing it to cut it, and then she wants a couple round bales in one of her ditches there that's washed out. Probably won't be much more than a couple anyways. Uh, once I cut that, I'm going to go back to the backfield again, and I have some areas, I don't know if you guys can hear me with the wind blowing or not, but there's some areas that are down around the ditch that kind of lie low, they've been kind of wet and waterlogged, and they just don't grow hay worth of crap, so it's got a bunch of uh, undesirable stuff growing there, so I'm going to actually round bale that as well. So once I get done over at the neighbors, I'm going to go back there and cut all that stuff that I'm going to plan on round baling. Uh, I'm cutting it last because it's going to need the least amount of drying time. So, let's get to cutting. Stop wasting time. Let's chit chat. More, I don't know, whatever. Cut, 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 cutter, cutter, whatever. Alright guys, so we're going to cut this patch and the good hay in the back on the other side of the pond first. And then we'll go over there, uh, just on the other side of the house, there's her pasture. I'm going to cut it last. Uh, but. This is a white 2135. I'm pulling a 2412 Gale 12 foot disc bind. We're going to turn the PTO on, which is right here. Take the brake off. Engage it just like a clutch. You see that shaft spinning down there? It's running. Then I'll set my tack over to 1000 RPM. I run about 800. 20 or 30, right around 800, and then once I get going, I let it try to keep it above 18, 800. And then, well, this one here, my middle one, is my up and down. My closest one is my pivot. So if I push it forward, that pivot pivots it to the left, pull it back, pivots it to the right. So I run in fifth gear and I shift from low to high depending on how I'm turning and everything. You can see where the trees really eat down on the, the soil fertility. Out away from the trees it's up pretty good. pretty good, not near as green or lush as I would expect it to with the fertilizer that I put on it, but it's, it's pretty clean. There are a few weeds right here, but out in there there's no weeds. It is Wednesday, I'm heading to work, and uh, yesterday I cut the neighbors, cut her little, little piece of pasture, and I cut in the backfield around the, along the ditch where it's kind of junky stuff. Uh, I went ahead and cut it, plan on round bailing it. Then while I was cutting, Dad made it over here, and he went ahead and took the tractor and his header, and he tetted everything that I cut on Monday, and then 
yesterday evening once we got done I worked on my stacker you see here in the background uh, my rolling rack I don't know if you guys remember but my rolling rack was would cock sideways and it I couldn't set second table couldn't set up another layer of bales once you got to about five or six the five, layer five or six um, so I've actually taken the rolling rack frame it was bent a little bit and bent in narrower so I straightened it out it's not perfect but it's much better and I also uh, have my buddy with a lathe make me some new rollers and I put roller took the brakes off the front I put rollers on the front as well and hopefully hopefully they'll take care of my wedging problem and it'll make it to where if I have five layers on it I can actually dump a partial load and not tear up the rolling rack um, the other thing that's going on with that problem is the second table is cocked just a little bit so whenever it sets it up it starts out crooked which does not help the, the wedging of the rolling rack so that's one more thing I gotta do on this wagon and I think it'll be ready once I get done with that but uh, the, the hole in the frame where there, there's a brace under there the hole in the frame it's really not bad but it is egged out just a little bit so I'm gonna have to take that bolt out move that brace out of the way I'm gonna weld on that hole a little bit take a die grinder and round it back out and it I'll probably gain an eighth of an inch there but an eighth of an inch uh, you know out six seven feet however long the second table is adds up to a little bit almost a, almost an inch I guess if it was eight feet it'd be an inch so anyways that's just a little update I gotta go to work whenever I get done with work I'll come I'll come back and we'll I'll show you what we're doing on the stacker uh, for the rest of it and what we did already uh, the other thing dad is coming over today to get the tether to take home he's gonna come over this morning he's gonna take the tether home and he is going to Ted his hay. He cut the front field, the field that we had a yield contest on last year. Um, he cut that field and he cut one more field in the back. He's playing on square bale and all that. I'm playing on square bale on all of mine. Luckily, we do have two stackers, so we don't have to pull them back and forth now, as long as they work. I need to get this thing over to the shop. I'll show you what I got going on. This piece here, the second table, has been shifted. The front of it's been shifted that way, so it's kind of crooked. Whenever it sets it up, it actually sets the, st the stack up crooked. And that's what has been binding my rolling rack. So what I did was, my rolling rack had, this piece was bent on it, so I cut it off. I put a new piece on it, drilled my hole, clamped my cable to it. I had my buddy of mine with a machine with a lathe make new rollers and then I took the old rollers I welded them up and we made them round again and I put the old rollers in here so hopefully this thing will slide much easier so it doesn't have the brakes and then what I'm gonna do for this is <clears throat> got my ratchet strap in here and I'm actually pulling back on this I'm pulling back on this piece of frame right here Got a wasp buzzing around me this here we're pulling back on that which which in turn shifts this whole thing over and what I found was when I take this bolt out the hole in the frame is is egged out just a little bit it's not much eighth inch maybe three sixteenths of an inch but it definitely will have an effect so I'm gonna pull this over to the shop I'm gonna set the the load rack or the third table whatever you want to call it up in the air and get it out of my way all right guys presser's running in the background but this here is what i'm talking about if you can tell how oblong that is i'm gonna take my die grinder we're gonna clean this hole up get it to where i can weld and we're gonna weld up this this portion of the hole up here i'm gonna grind this clean too but uh we'll weld up this portion of the hole take the die grinder and clean it back up so we can get the bolt to fit but we want it to fit tight so and I was able to actually this here has enough flex in it that I didn't have to take the other side loose so I got a ratchet strap here 
that's pulling this back to take the slack off my bolt. And I pick this up out of the way. I'm going to clean this up. We're going to weld that up. Then we're going to oval it back, or oh, not oval it, <laughs> round the hole back up. And uh, hopefully that'll be, be pretty good and clean. All right, guys. That's what she looks like. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's definitely much, much, much tighter. Much better. So, I'm going to put that in. Tighten her down, and we'll see if she stays where it needs to be. Looking pretty good down through there right now.